Hi, it's Adam with webstarts.com. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to create a free website for your club or organization. When you're creating a website, usually you're doing it for one of three purposes, either to sell products, sell services, or convey information. Chances are, if you have a club or organization, you're primarily focused on conveying information. So this video is going to walk you through creating a web design and a web layout that's primarily focused on conveying information and just keeping the website very simple and easy to use. That way you can pass it on to somebody else in the organization, or you can allow multiple people within your club or organization to be contributors to the website. I'll show all that in this video, so stay tuned to check it out. Now, before we get into the video, I'd like to invite you to tap the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video on a variety of topics, including web design, internet, marketing, search engine optimization, and those sort of things. All right, to get started with your free website, go to webstarts.com, click on get started, it's free. And in the next step, you're going to choose a design for your website. All of the designs are 100% customizable and they can be changed at any time. You can search for a design by category over here on the left-hand side or you can search for even by a built-in feature, for example, a built-in blog. And for this particular demonstration, I'm going to be selecting a website design that has a blog. You can choose any web design that you'd like. You can always add a blog to it if it doesn't come with it from the get-go. All right, click on select, and then in the next step, you're gonna do the normal sign-up stuff. So I'm gonna enter my name, my email address, and then I'm going to choose a password. I'm gonna click sign up. And then I'm going to receive a field where I can enter my phone number and I'll be sent a text message code that verifies that I'm a real person and that I'm legit. So I'll meet you back on the other side. I'm going to do that part off screen. Okay, great. I verified my information. Now it's time for me to choose a web address. I can select a free.webstarts.com address just by entering in any keyword in this field. I can also choose to skip this step and do it later. And I can connect a top level domain name. So if you have your very own .com, .net, or .org address, you wanna use it with web starts, you can enter it here. Just keep in mind that you need a paid subscription in order to connect a top level domain name. So to get started for free, just go ahead and enter in a .webstarts.com address or click it, choose later, and you'll proceed to sign up for a free account, just like you're seeing me do now. Okay, now that you have signed up for a Web Starts account, you've chosen a web address, you're going to be greeted in the dashboard by a video that walks you through everything you need to know to get started creating a website with Web Starts. You can view that video just by clicking play, but I'm just going to exit out of it so that I can show you how to set up your informational website using Web Starts in this video. All right, to begin editing the pages of your website, all you need to do is hover over the thumbnail that's located in the middle of the page and click edit site that will load up the web starts page editor. I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a moment. But before I do that, I want to show you some of the built in applications and features that you can use with your web starts website. You can upload your files and folders by clicking here. You can add a store or e-commerce to your website by clicking on this panel. You can click on this blog panel to activate a blog on your website. And by the way, if the panel is blue, that means that it's already activated. If it's gray, that means that it's currently disabled. You need to click on it to activate it or make it uh, active on your website. All right, roles and permissions. That means you can assign people access to you, make edits and changes to your website or blog. I'm gonna get into that in just a little bit. And there's a whole lot of other features here that you can beat around with. But just for this video, we're going to go straight to the point and that's creating a, an easy to understand design with your website. So I'm gonna click on edit site. It's gonna load up the web starts page editor and in web starts, everything is drag and drop. So that means all you do is click on an element and then you can drag that element wherever you want it to appear on the page. You can double click on an element and you'll be able to access the content of the element so you can edit it. So for example, if I want to edit the contents of this text box, I can do that by double clicking just like I did or clicking on it once and then clicking the attached edit icon. And then I can put whatever headline I want. So I'm just going to say whatever headline for this, you might put whatever's relevant to your club or organization. Okay. Some of the things to keep in mind when you're working on mainly an informational website are just that you want to keep uh, some conformity to your website. 
And to help you do that, Web Starts has a section up here at the top that's called the header. You notice when I click on it, there's a little bit of a green highlight for everything that's in the header. Things that are placed in the header are going to show up in that same spot on the top of each page of your website. And similarly, there's a section called the footer. And just like the header, when I click on an element located in the footer, it's highlighted in green and you can drag and drop things into the footer and they're displayed at the bottom of each page on your website. Now, everything in between here is just the body to your website. And those are really where you're going to make the majority of changes if you wanna change the design of your site. So let's say, for example, I wanna change out this big image here. I can just double click on it. That opens up what's called the file manager. Now I can upload a photo from my local computer by clicking on upload. But in this example, I'm just going to go ahead and click on image search. And I'm going to select one of the images uh, here that's available for free inside the Web Starts account. So you can see that I swapped out that image. You can use whatever image you want. And notice that you can just click on any element and you can drag it wherever you want it to appear on this page. When you're ready to save your changes, just click save up here and they're immediately saved and published. Okay, if you wanna view what that looks like on the web, just click view site. You can take a look at it just like that. Okay, so let me try that again. I got out of there pretty quick. So that's what it looks like when you view your site online. All right, since we're creating a website for a club or organization, and we're mainly focused on keeping it simple and focused on uh, making regular updates and changes to your website, uh, you're probably not going to want to veer away from this initial design a lot. So I don't recommend making a lot of changes by dragging and dropping elements around, but instead just try to focus on double clicking on the content sections and then updating them to uh, reflect the information that you want to convey. If there's too much on the page and you just don't feel like you can fill it up, for example, let's say you don't feel like you can create enough content for all this, you can just click on it with the little red X, and then you can delete it. And if you create too much uh, space at the bottom of your web page, you can just click on the footer and you can drag it up and that will actually reduce the amount of space on the page. Likewise, if you need to create more space on the page, you can select any uh, element, click on the smart handle that's on the top and then drag down and it will push everything down the page. So notice for example here, if I drag down, it's pushing down the page um, now, there are times where you might want to push all these things down the page, and if that happens, it might be good to go over here and add one of these divider lines across the top of the page just so that you can push all the elements together like this. It's just a little trick I use. So if I would just want to create some space, I just do that. Okay, and that brings me to this. If you want to add elements to the page, like for example, a text box, you can click add and then choose text. You can add a big headline like that. You can add uh, smaller uh, text boxes. You can even do like a little paragraph of text down here. This is a common size. And then if you want to um, you know, edit the font and that kind of thing, you can do that within the text box as well. If you ever wanna go back, because notice that I pushed that down right there, just click undo and it'll walk you back to where you were. So let's do that a couple of times. Get rid of that text box and we're ready to pick back up. Now you can add all kinds of elements over here on the left hand side, text box content blocks, which are kind of preformed groups of content. And you can add images. So we already talked about how you can access an image either from your computer, but also from the built in image library. You can add buttons, galleries, slideshows, all of these things, anything that you wanna add, you can pretty much add to your website. But again, this is a video about creating a website for your club or organization. So I'm not gonna recommend that you make tons of changes to the design. You really wanna keep it simple here. I do recommend that you update the name of your website up here at the top to whatever the name of your organization or club is. And if you have a logo, you can delete this little icon here. Maybe you can upload a logo and uh, insert it into uh, this place here. Notice another thing about uh, web design is you want to have a consistent navigation at the top. So the navigation menu where all the pages of your website are displayed is up here in the header and that shows up in the same spot 
at the top of each page of your website. And that brings me to this. If you want to create a new page to your website, go over here, click File, New, and then it's going to ask you if you want to save your changes. And then you can either choose to copy an existing page of your website or start from a new blank page. If you start from a new blank page, it's going to have the header and footer, so it's not going to be a completely blank page. And if you copy from an existing page, it's going to contain all of the content on the page that you're copying from. So it's just a page duplicate. You can give the page a name down here. So for example, if I wanted to uh, make a copy of the about page and I wanted to name it info, I could just do that and click create page and then it's going to take me to that page. So this is now a copy of the about page and if I wanted to update it to look different than the about page, I could maybe change some of the content just like that. Maybe I want to change this image as well. When you're creating a website for a club or organization and you're conveying information, I do want to recommend that you create some specific pages. Of course, every website needs a home page. That's the page that people land on when they enter your website address. And I also recommend creating an about page. And what you should have on the about page is, or things like uh, maybe photos of people who are in the club or organization, maybe their titles, maybe a little biography about them, that sort of thing. Another thing that I recommend that you include on the about page is maybe a founder's story. Like you could tell people, hey, this is why we started. This is the event that occurred that inspired us to start this club or organization, that kind of thing. Another one you can notice up here on my menu is I have a calendar an event calendar is great because if you're a club or an organization, maybe a sports team, you probably have some upcoming events. And if you double click on that, you can link it to either a Google calendar and you can also create events that will appear on that calendar calendar. And that's a great way to convey relevant information about upcoming events uh, concerning your club or whatever. So I, I think a lot of people find that to be helpful. Uh, another page that I think you should definitely have right here is the contact page. And if I go to the contact page here in my page editor, you can see that I have my address. I've got a map of where our location is. You don't need to include that if it's not relevant to your club or organization. Just click on the element and then click the delete option. And this is something I think everybody should have rather than have an email address displayed on the website. It should just have a form that you submit and you can edit the fields that appear on the form just by double clicking on the form and then selecting the fields that are relevant to what you want to do. And you can do things like change the order of the fields. And there's some other stuff that you can do too that's pretty cool with web starts. For example, uh, you can change the email address where the form submissions are sent to. You can choose a confirmation page to send people to after they've completed the form. And you can even select a mailing list that you would like to add people to that complete the form. And then you can subscribe to the email marketing app that's out on the dashboard. And it will automatically be populated with the people that uh, submitted that form. So anyway, a lot of cool features there. I'm not going to get into all of that for this video. The next page that I really want to show you and the way that I think you should really convey most of the information if you're making regular updates to your website is the blog page. Now you can just select the blog page here or you can click on the blog panel in the app. Notice that I double click on the blog widget to open up this manage blog view. Again, you can also access this manage blog view by clicking on the blog application panel while in the dashboard view. All right, if I wanna create a new post, I click the new post button, and then I can just give a title to my blog. Now, you don't have to use this as a blog. This could be something, just an informational feed. So think about it that way. So I'm just gonna say, latest news about our club. You can put your name, you can then just begin to type the latest news. So this is the latest news you need to know about our club. You can put obviously whatever content you want here. This is just something off the cuff for this demonstration. Another thing that you can do is you can add images and videos and even little code snippets here in the blog. So if you have an image that you'd like to go along with um, your post, you can just select it 
either from the image library that's included, or once again, you can upload an image from your local computer, um, that sort of thing. So when you're ready, go ahead. Well, I went ahead and deleted my uh, photo by accident there. But when you're ready, what you can do is you can go ahead and pu publish your blog, or you can just save it as a draft and then come back and publish it later. So I published that post. I can click on view, and then I can see what that post looks like on my live website. Now, if you don't like the layout of the post by default, you can change that as well. Just go in here and uh, let's see. Well, that's actually not where you change it. My apologies. You go here, click on settings, and then you can select from one of three layouts. So you have classic, horizontal photo, and you have grid. So if you want to go with classic, you would just save that, and that's how your uh, blog post would be displayed. Uh, this is actually the post page, so we have that. And then you have the option as well to assign categories and display categories. Um, let's go back in and take a look at that. So I'm going to go to my blog app again. Another thing you can do is you can click on the blog on the sidebar, and that will open up the Manage Blog modal as well. So uh, if I want to add categories for this blog, I can do this. So I can say things like, um, newsletters or I don't know, whatever category you might want. And then you just make sure that category is checked for each blog. And again, you're just going to publish that and you can see what it looks like uh, just by clicking on it. But what you can do as well is you can go to your homepage and if you just want there to be uh, a link to that blog, all you do is just change this button to say, get uh, the latest information. Like I said, that blog post uh, doesn't really even need to be used like a blog. It can just be like the latest information about your club or your organization. Or you could just say, click here to get announcements, whatever you want. Notice that I just clicked on that, click settings, and then I just edited the button text. So there are a ton of other things you can do with web starts. I'm not going to cover them all in this video. I think that this just gives you a very high view of how to create some basic information. Oh, one other thing, super important. Uh, before I go here, I want to save my changes. I want to show you what you do uh, if you want to give other people in your club or organization the ability to make edits and changes to the website. You're going to go back out to the dashboard. So I'm going to do that. Once you're on the dashboard, you're going to go down to roles and permissions, and then you're just going to add a contributor. So you're going to add their email address and then you're going to select the role you want them to play. If you want them to have complete access, choose admin. If you want them to have mostly complete access, choose admin limited. This is the same as admin, but they can't make edits to the site. So that's probably not going to help you that much. If you just want them to make blog posts, select the option for blog contributor. And then you just send them an invite. I didn't enter an email address, so it's kicking that little message back. But that's how you invite people to become contributors to your website and to your blog. So they'll receive an email, they'll click on the link in the email, and then they'll be able to uh, be contributors to the website or blog themselves. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to visit webstarch.com to sign up to create your very own free website for your club, your organization, and anything else that you really want to create online.